thanks for the great response to my book to newbie tag um i've it i noticed that a lot of you primarily read fiction and that some of you are pretty excited that i was going to be recommending non-fiction books and probably more of a regional and singaporean focused reading list so i'm glad that's precisely the things that i read so um today's video is gonna be about psychology books my five recommendations that are not self-help i know there's a lot of pop psychology going around and having studied psychology before i do not really trust pop psychology a lot of these self-help books are top on the list and if you find them helpful i think that's great um, there's no stopping you or whatsoever um, i think these self-help books serve as really good reminders to practice you know some good lessons in my recommendations uh, i have quite a varied interdisciplinary approach to psychology. Uh, I am a anthro major psych minor student that has deeply influenced the way that I read about psychology. The first book I want to recommend is called Crazy Like Us, The Globalization of the American Psyche by Ethan Waters. Um, here you go. This book, please read it um, even if you're interested in psychology or not. I would recommend this book anyway. Uh, because, you know, chances are you are living in this world and you are affected by globalization. So that is enough for you to read this book. Crazy Like Us is a collection of different anthropologists who go, on, go to different countries and they study how the import of the American biomedical structure of mental health impacts the countries that they've been translated into. For example, in Japan, um, depression wasn't really the same kind of depression you might experience in America because as you know, a lot of mental illnesses, a lot of psyche and um, all these kinds of thinking is very deeply shaped by your cultural upbringing. So depression in an American context may not be depression in our country, but the antidepressants by pharmaceutical co companies are the same. So people start marketing agencies and stuff started to market depression as a particular kind of cultural um, illness in Japan to sell those antidepressant drugs. It's pretty crazy to me. Mental health interventions spearheaded by the um, American or Euro-American leaders of the, I don't know, psychology field and they get to dictate, you know, what constitutes mental health, what constitutes a mental illness, what constitutes the appropriate treatment. I am all for intercultural understandings of psychology. Unfortunately, this is a field that does not get as much traction as I think it should. So please read this book. I really think anyone, especially for those of you who are watching from a US or Euro-American context, you might be surprised at how um, American ideas of things are often treated as universal truths, but I'm here to tell you that they are not. The second book I want to recommend is Are You Okay? A Guide to Caring for Your Mental Health by Katie Morton. This author is actually a YouTuber and she makes a lot of videos about mental health and psychology. Uh, on her channel and I've, I've, I found those videos extremely helpful. So this guidebook was written with that in mind for for a very easy understanding of what mental health you know, terms and conversations might entail. So if you're new to this whole thing, please read it. And she, the thing that she does is that she has little check-ins throughout the book, which I highly enjoy as a reader. It makes me feel like she's really invested in my own well-being as a reader and she's not just chucking a whole bunch of information at me. The third book that I have, it's actually, I have it in a hard copy. This is Trauma and Recovery, The Aftermath of Violence and Dom from Domestic Abuse to Political Terror by Judith Herman. This is kind of like psychoanalysis. I mean, if you've read Freud before, uh, kind of similar approach. Judith Herman kind of wrote this in the context of the post-war 
uh, where a lot of war veterans were experiencing PTSD. It's also in the time period where second wave feminism, um, a lot of um, talk about domestic abuse was very common that time. So definitely this was a very, very important book back then. And I still find it very relevant now. This is one of the earliest books about trauma. Um, and the best thing about it is that it talks about the recovery process and what it means to integrate uh, one's suffering identity into their everyday life instead of repressing, suppressing, um, ignoring, silencing, etc. And I, so I, I do think that this is still very much an important work to read. It can get pretty heavy at some points with uh, some graphic descriptions and definitely if you are someone who has had some trauma I think you might be you might have to be careful reading this though I feel like this has given me so much insight into how I handle my own trauma and how I also handle um, the what the the recovery process of those close to me so yeah, I mean, I, I learned a lot from this book. Um, the fourth book I want to recommend is actually a local author. Um, this is A Philosopher's Madness by Li Shan Chan. She wanted to write this book because um, there's not a lot of literature written on mental health in Singapore. Like, there's still a lot of myths about mental health in Singapore. This author, you know, had a pretty good life, you know, in terms of having a good education, a bright path ahead, etc. But um, she had an episode of psychosis and went through a lot, a lot of deep philosophical questioning throughout that time. So this book actually has quite a lot of different things, not just her personal reflections, but also recounts from that actual psychotic experience um, and also a lot of philosophical inserts in between um, questions about cultural understandings of mental health etc. I'm not sure whether they still published this book, I bought it quite a while back, 2014, uh, published by Ethos Books Singapore. If I, find, if I find a link for it, I will link it. Um, if any of you know any more authors that deal with mental health in Singapore, please let me know. I want to read more of them as well. The last book I want to recommend is a pretty thick book. I think when I read it, it was this thick. I borrowed it from the library. It's called The Noonday Demon, An Atlas of Depression by Andrew, Sol Andrew Solomon. Um, this author has a few TED Talks about this issue as well. And I think, I mean, this author is originally a journalist, if I'm not wrong, and has written um, many, many articles about many, many different things. I, I, I personally felt like this was like a one, one on one book on depression. I was going through a really difficult time at that when I picked up this book and I, I wanted to read this book to help me figure out what I was supposed to do. It's a difficult read. I, I took very long to read it. I took like two full months and I was reading it almost every day. It has a lot of information, not just about the biology of depression. It has a lot of personal stories that the author collected from many different people who, who were struggling with severe depression. It also has a lot of his own personal reflections about his condition, about the people around him, about the way that the world talks about depression. It has like every single thing you want to know about depression. Um, of course, it is not like the Bible, but at that time when I was reading it, I was really scrambling for as much knowledge as I could get about depression. So many layers to it. It's not just about being sad. It's not just about getting biomedical treatment. There is so much to it. Also, don't recommend it if you are having difficulty with certain mental health conditions because the author does not hold back from a lot of descriptions. So um, when I was reading it, I wasn't at the best mental state and it definitely impacted a bit of my own mental stability. But I was reading it then and I chose to read it then so now that you know that from me, uh, you can choose if you want to engage with the book and when you want to engage with it. Those are my five recommendations, psychology related books that are not self-help. So yeah, that's all for me for this particular episode. 
and if you enjoyed it thanks so much again for watching if you choose to pick up any of the books i recommended uh, comment below and let me know which book and why um, if you have any more recommendations for me uh, let me know yeah excited to share more books with y'all how do i end this thing i don't know okay end